Hi, I'm Natasha from Finley Creek Soap Company. In today's video, I am making lemongrass and calendula soap. For this video, I have already prepared the oils and lye solution, so we can jump right into blending these together. I prepared these in advance to help speed up my soap making workflow. Mixing the sodium hydroxide with distilled water generates a lot of heat as does melting the hard oils and butters. I prefer to make soap when the temperatures of these parts are in the high 20 degrees Celsius or around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So mixing these in advance means that I don't have to wait around until they have cooled. All safety precautions are still needed in every step of the process. I'm wearing my safety glasses and gloves long sleeves and pants. It's also important to keep the lye solution safe as it cools, storing it in an appropriate, well-marked container in a safe place away from kids or pets. Today I'm making two different soaps, so I've divided the soap batter into four equal parts, two of which will be used for another soap. This also lets me multitask while I'm waiting for the soap to set up or thicken a bit before moving on to the next step. This lemongrass and calendula soap has two layers. For the bottom layer, I've added about three tablespoons of calendula petals that I have ground into a powder with a coffee grinder. I did have some trouble grinding them evenly. So this layer in the final soap has a more speckled appearance. If you are looking to use calendula for a more uniform color, I'd recommend using a better quality coffee grinder than the cheap one I bought on Amazon. Sifting the petals to remove larger pieces or purchasing calendula that has already been ground. I've added a bit of texture to this layer using the back of a spoon but I don't think the soap was thick enough yet to really hold those layers, so the effect was not as dramatic as I intended. In the top layer of the soap, I used two teaspoons of white kale and clay mixed with two teaspoons of distilled water as the colorant. I also added some whole calendula petals to this half, and I really liked the results. This soap layer is pretty thick, but that's okay. This will help keep the petals suspended in the soap instead of sinking to the bottom of the layer. I used the end of a whisk to create the texture on top and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I did have to wait a bit after pouring the final layer for it to thicken enough to hold the texture. Because the top layer is one solid color, I was able to make a few attempts first until it reached a texture that I was happy with if it wasn't quite thick enough, I just used a spatula to smooth it out again before trying a few minutes later. One thing I noticed when cutting the soap was that some of the petals would catch on my cutter wire and create a drag mark on the surface of the bar. Usually, when there are extra decorations on top of the soap, I'll turn the soap on its side while cutting. But unfortunately, that is more difficult when these are suspended in the middle of the bar. I was able to smooth out any significant drag marks with a palette knife while the soap was still soft. Thanks very much for watching. I post a new video every Monday of the various things I make in my small soap business here in Ottawa. And I hope you come back again next week for a new project.